Welcome back! With Ubuntu 23.10 Magic Minotaur, the latest Ubuntu SDS version has been released. As usual with SDS versions, Canonical again provides its users with the latest and greatest technology in market maturity. What Ubuntu 23.10 has to offer, etc. All this we will catch up in this video. Stay tuned! Ubuntu 23.10 is not an LTS version with long-term maintenance, but the third and last interim version before the next LTS version Ubuntu 24.04. This means that some of the innovations we are about to take a look at will come up again next year in Ubuntu 24.04. This is quite normal as the SDS versions are meant to test and measure the latest technology for the upcoming LTS version. In this section, we take a closer look at the specs of Ubuntu 23.10. Let's start with the minimum requirements count on these key points. 2 GHz dual core CPU or newer, 4 GB RAM or more, 25 GB disk space or more, DVD or USB slot for the installation medium, internet access would be helpful. Ubuntu 23.10 is an interim version that comes with static version status but is only provided with updates for a total of 9 months. The architecture supported is classical 64-bit. The Ubuntu server also supports ARM, IBM Power, IBM Z and Linux One in addition to 64-bit architecture. Ubuntu supports the Debian package and its own snap container format. Ubuntu serves a wide range of target groups. Ubuntu focuses on the Linux server but also on the Linux desktop. Both editions are freely available. The desktop is also oriented towards the needs of desktop users. This can be seen by the clean and modern design of the Ubuntu desktop. There are two editions, the interim versions and the long-term maintenance versions. The interim versions appear in the production-ready stage and are aimed at progressive users and developers who have a corresponding need for new interfaces and apps. So if you want to have the latest and greatest of the new, you are in good hands with the interim versions or SDS versions. The second edition is the version with long-term maintenance which abbreviated as LTS and stands for long-term support. If you are looking for maximum stability, you should go for the LTS version. The LTS versions are also aimed at companies who plan their desktops over a period of years and therefore having planning, reliability, consistency and greatest possible stability. This means that in the course of an LTS version, the software package status is H, as there are mainly security updates and this for 5 years for an LTS version. If you need more time, you can get another 5 years of security updates via an Ubuntu Pro subscription, which makes it possible to get up to 10 years of support for an LTS version. By the way, up to 5 instances with Ubuntu Pro are free of charge. Besides the desktop, there is also the server, which is the basis for the desktop, but also for all commercial solutions from Canonical in the sense of a platform. Server instances should be provided with an LTS version for long-term planning and stability. On the desktop, the LTS versions are also suitable, as they are regularly backported kernels and drivers from the SDS versions for the LTS versions through the hardware enablement stack for short HWE stack as well as 5 year security updates in general. Let's take a look what Ubuntu 23.10 has to offer you in terms of new features. We have Linux kernel 6.5, Gnome Shell 45, new app store, Ubuntu Tiling Assistant. Ubuntu now offers a refreshed installer. This looks top modern and has been long and carefully developed without the previous installer being bad in any way. If you want to get started with Ubuntu, here are the roof key points. First, we download the Ubuntu ISO image. To do this, navigate to the Ubuntu project website and select download at the top. In the menu that pops up, select download Ubuntu desktop and then scroll down to 23.10. Then click on the green box Download 23.10. After a short moment, the download window opens. I can't demonstrate it now because I had already worked on it and didn't create this video with the final version. So, as soon as the ISO file has been downloaded completely, you should verify the checksum. I have already shown how to do this. The link is in the description of the video. Just have a look if you are unclear. 
We now have a quick overview of the installation process. If you already installed Ubuntu or know the process, you can skip to the next chapter. So, we're in the Ubuntu 23.10 live mode. If you boot it up the system, you are able to test the system without any change on your hard disk. You can try the full system as extensive as you want. If you want to install a system, then check on the desktop the button Install Ubuntu. Double click it. The installer now will open. In the first hand you have to choose your language. Then select your keyboard, click next. In this case a newer version of the installer is available. I decided to update it and then click restart and the installer will reopen. After a few seconds, we have to redo our steps, so choose our language and the keyboard layout. I have no wireless connection, so I will go on with wired. In this screen, you can choose between default installation and expanded installation. If you are new to Ubuntu, I highly recommend you the expanded version. Also, I recommend you to check the box below and install third-party software and drivers. Then hit next. On this screen you have the choice to manual partitioning or to follow the guided partitioning. I recommend you to use LVM and activate disk encryption. And by the way, ZFS is back again. Okay, but after that click next. Please provide your passphrase for your encryption. And don't forget this passphrase. <laughs> click next. Now you have a summary over the devices and partitions. If all is fine, in my case it is so, click install. Now you can set your time zone and click next. Now you can provide your user credentials or you have to create your user and your password, the machine name. If you are in an enterprise environment, you can also activate the Active Directory then you either can use your local Active Directory on-prem or the Azure Active Directory, for instance. If you don't have an Active Directory, then do not mark it and just hit Next. Otherwise, activate it and click Next. Then you have to provide your domain and your domain user and password. I don't have it here, so I deactivate it and click Next. Now you can choose between Light and Dark Mode and also the color scheme. I will leave it as default and just show you how it would look like. I will set it back to light and orange and then click next. So very well, the installation now is running. This may take a couple of minutes. Stay tuned, drink a coffee or have a break. See you in a few minutes. Now the installation process is finished. I congratulate you. You can now restart your system. Just click the green button and then the system will reboot and boot into your new fresh installed Ubuntu system. That's all. We now go into the next chapter. My freshly installed system took 11 GB of the disk. Initially 987 MB of memory are allocated. The number of pre-installed packages is 1662 Debian packages and 10 snap containers. At the time of creating this video, GNOME Shell 45.0 was provided. Ubuntu polished the GNOME desktop after its introduction compared to vanilla GNOME. The result is a desktop approach that delivers a very decent result for ordinary desktop operation with mouse and keyboard. Thus Ubuntu realizes it's stuck on the left side, which at the same time offers the main functions for daily work. You can compare this with the Windows taskbar or the macOS stock. Speaking of the macOS dock, if you like such a dock, you can also move the bar from the left to the bottom and center it. Then it is transformed into a dock. Ubuntu also offers the option to set color shades for a GNOME by default. This has been available since Ubuntu 22.04 and is not an innovation in this version. However, I mention it in the spirit of the spruced up desktop. Traditionally, Ubuntu comes with a set of pretty wallpapers that are always worth mentioning. 
With GNOME 45, a few changes have been made. For example, there is no longer a workspace indicator button at the top left, but now there are small dashes. If we click on it, we get to the overview of the open apps. If you are looking for apps in general, the nine dots at the bottom left are the place to go. Then we are facing the launchpad. Another new feature in GNOME 45 is that the side menu now extends all the way to the top. Activities are now displayed at the top left of the file browser. Another new feature is the tiling function, which some of you may already know from PopOS. This is to make it easier to arrange windows next to each other on the screen. Let's have an example. Let's check the print style software. We have Linux kernel 6.5, as browser, there's Firefox, as email client, we have Thunderbird, as office package, there's LibreOffice, and as software container, there's Snap. Depending on the type of installation you have been chosen, the software stack will be more lavish or more Spartan. What is new, however, is that the minimal installation with the browser and basic utilities is now pre-selected by default. If you want to install a pre-selection, you should use the expanded installation. This is especially recommended for new users. This system here is based on the expanded installation. In perspective of the pre-installed software, I can hardly complain here. The three games are not my taste, but overwise not a bad pre-selection. Let's move on to the snap container topic. It is not a secret that Ubuntu will say goodbye to the Debian package and shift more and more towards Snap. In this version, no primary app has been redeployed. What is new now is the firmware updater. This is a new Flutter app from Canonical. More far-reaching changes are expected for Ubuntu 24.04 and the interim versions between 24.04 and 26.04. The background to this are Canonical's plans to offer an immutable distro on Ubuntu LTS basis. This edition is then to run purely on Snap software and should then mean the final end for Debian packages as the feat of strength. If you are missing apps, then the App Center is your place to go. This is the App Store for Ubuntu, which has now completely replaced GNOME software and Ubuntu software and was launched by Canonical for Ubuntu on Flutter basis. I like the design of the App Store. It still looks a bit Spartan, but that could still change. The fact is that this App Store is responsible for updating Snap apps and will thus gain in relevance. Although it is responsible for searching apps that are also available on the Snapcraft marketplace, Debian packages can also be managed, for example, in the search, both are then displayed. Snap and Debian packages. Let's have some examples here. One might have assumed that Canonical would take a conservative approach in this last STS release before the next major LTS release and bring few innovations. Far from it. The changes in this version are extensive and modernize the Ubuntu desktop as well as the server with cutting edge packages and apps. The performance of the system is excellent. There are no seconds of pause or like that. However, the migration towards Snap is going ahead. This has happened somewhat differently than expected. Instead of shifting flagship apps, as it was the case in the past with Firefox, the Flutter apps are being carefully positioned on the basis of Snap. The firmware updater or the new app center are two prime examples here. Now let's come to my conclusion. Canonical delivers a solid work a compliment to the developers. This STS version is a great release. As a STS user, you get the latest technology served up, including a fresh kernel and operational readiness in the canonical terms. 
whether this is enough incentive for you to switch from Ubuntu 22.04 or another distro, you have to decide. If you are an SDS user, you still have round about 3 months with Ubuntu 23.04 to upgrade, which is advisable. In January 2024, support for Ubuntu 23.04 ends after 9 months, but I wouldn't recommend upgrading right now either. Wait another 2 or 3 weeks if any problems are found that need to be solved. After a certain grace period, you can upgrade without any hesitation. I will remain loyal to my Ubuntu 22.04 system and stay on the LTS branch. The innovations of Ubuntu 23.10 are great and I really like them. But I am a Flatpak user and therefore see dark clouds slowly gathering. It is possible to switch to Flatpak with Ubuntu 23.10, but presumably this will also be possible with Ubuntu 24.04 LTS, but at the latest when the switch to Snap has been made, that should be the end. Of course, this will still take some time and thanks to Ubuntu Pro LTS versions can be maintained for 10 years. But sooner or later Ubuntu users will be faced with the question of whether they will remain loyal to Ubuntu and switch to Snap or not. A topic I like to put off at the moment even in procrastination, I admit it. But now I would be interested in your impressions of Ubuntu 23.10. Who will switch or stay with their LTS version or other distro? I'm curious about your comments and opinions. Thanks for the kind attention and have a nice time. See you at the next time, ladies and gentlemen. Peace.